Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. With great joy, I welcome you to the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. This is our day of rejoicing, for Christ, who died for us, has risen from the dead to life triumphant, and he wishes to share that life of grace with us. I'm Father Sam Moorhead, the rector of the Cathedral Basilica in the heart of Denver, and I welcome and join in, to join us for this pre-recorded Mass of Easter Sunday. My friends, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, boy. 
let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, how with the Holy Spirit and power, he went about doing good and healing all those possessed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man raised on the third day by God and granted that he be visible, not to all people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and of the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord.
the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen, alleluia. Truly he is risen, alleluia. A happy, holy, and blessed Easter Sunday to each and every one of you as we gather here in the heart of Denver in our beautiful Cathedral Basilica. I welcome you to our celebration of the greatest and most important feast day of the entire year. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In fact, not just one day, but three days combined to become one new day have produced and made for this day. Holy Thursday, late in the night, the Lord instituted the sacraments that we receive even now in this Mass. His act of charity passed over into the perfection of charity as that Thursday rolled into Friday, and Friday was Good Friday, in which the Lord of life laid down his life to ransom, redeem, and heal us all by his death on the cross. Friday rolled into a Saturday, and that Saturday is a holy Saturday, but the Lord, dead in the tomb, lies asleep in death, and having offered the sacrifice of his perfect love, his perfect will, of his very body up to the Father, that sacrifice is received, and only the Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, can show Christ the response. And now that Saturday led to the great event in the night, and three days have now passed, and we have come to the fulfillment of it all, for this is the day the Lord has made, and we rejoice, and we are glad in it, for this is the day of resurrection, the day in which he who is the resurrection and the life, who assumed our nature, took our flesh, died for our sins, now rises in glory seeking to share, to communicate out his sort of life to us. This one day gives meaning to all the days of our lives. This one day has redeemed all the years of our lives. And this one day now opens the door to eternity so there will never be an end to the days of our lives. The Christian life, when it's boiled down, is a sentence of three simple words, life, death, and resurrection. We speak of these of Christ, but they are our words as well, life, death, and resurrection. What does it mean to be alive? Earlier today, and before celebrating this Mass, I was handed a recently newborn child and I got to hold in my arms a beautiful babe, a little girl who is fresh to this world. And who of us among us does not have our heart melt just a little bit when we see a newborn babe filled with all the hopes and the joys, the expectations, the enthusiasm of a life ahead of them, the joy of the parents, the family members and friends who gather around them. Oh, 
there is a good to new life. And when we reach the great milestones of life, do we not have a bit of hope and joy bubbling up within us when a child comes to those milestones? Perhaps it's the first day of kindergarten. Perhaps it's that little league win. Maybe it's the gymnastics award. Maybe it's that first dance in middle school. Maybe it's those high school years, the hope and promise of the future, college, jobs, marriages, all the great milestones of life. These are how we often measure it. It is good to be human. In fact, it is so good to be human that God has affirmed our humanity by drawing so near to us that he has taken part in it. That is the first fact of this sentence, life, death, and resurrection. The life that you and I know as human beings, our God has come to share in. This is the marvel of the incarnation, the fact that God, the second person of the Trinity, should assume our nature, take our flesh, be born among us, and be a man with us. Jesus Christ is the fullness of God, come in bodily form. From all eternity, no beginning, no middle, and certainly no end, he is one with the Trinity, co-equal in majesty with the Father and the Holy Spirit. But to reconcile, redeem, and heal a human race, he came among us. It is now better to be human by the fact that Jesus Christ has walked on this face of the earth because our humanity is understood, been accepted by, and lifted up into the very life of God. So let us, yes, always rejoice in the goodness of what it means to be human. Let us thank God for the great human moments when we, of ourselves, on a natural level, can say it's good to be human. And then, even when we have difficult human moments, we can still rejoice because we know that our God shares our humanity, that what Jesus Christ assumed 21 centuries ago, he has never set aside. That when he took our flesh and became a man, he never put that aside. And though he reigns in the glorious high courts of heaven, he who is God and man in one divine person is still man. And our humanity is wed, caught up in, participates in the divine life of God. Oh, it is good to be human. Life. But life passes by way then also to a consideration of death. And that's where you and I have to be honest as humans and as Christians. This human life we have is not without its difficulties. And I know so many of you know that just as well or even better than I. Any of us who've circled the sun enough times, who've passed through enough winters in this world will know that there is always a tinge of suffering, of dying, and death that we carry with us. We as Christians understand this theologically as a product of the fall, that our first parents, when God made the human race at its very dawn, its origin, at its genesis, our first parents were given a choice to choose to fix their will on God to serve him, but it was in freedom, and so in freedom they could choose not to, and they were tempted not to, and they chose not to. And when you choose against the perfect, beautiful, holy will of God, there are consequences that come from that. It's not that we believe in a cruel God who wants to punish, but there are ramifications to our own freely chosen decisions. And that's when death and suffering and disease and disorder entered into the world. And we've had it ever since. In our beautiful patrimony of Catholic prayers, we speak of this as a good world, but yet not heaven. This is the veil of tears. We walk through a dark valley. There is much good in this world, no doubt, and we rejoice in our humanity, but we also know that we've been the successors, the inheritors of Adam and Eve's curse the curse of suffering and of death. All you have to do is either watch the news or consult your own experience, that perhaps of your own family members and friends. 
Oh, we see in the news acts of terrorism. We see deaths, accidental sometimes, caused by others all too frequently. We know that people are not always kind to each other, that the misuse of the will keeps going on. It's not just directed towards God, it's also directed towards one another. Here in Colorado, sometimes all you have to do is drive down I-25 and you encounter the effects of road rage, which are probably themselves a proof of the fall. Just how we think we can treat each other behind the anonymity of the wheel in our car. And then if we're really honest and we push really in close to our own lives, we see the brokenness, the frustration, the disorder, and sometimes the despair that is in our own lives. Physically, our bodies will give out on us. All of us will grow old. Some of us will have diseases, and every one of us will die. If it's not that, then perhaps it's more on the psychological, on the emotional plane. We see darknesses within ourselves. We live in a time and a place where we recognize mental health issues, but we also know we face all-time high levels of depression. And then we just survey the family scene where we have loved ones, and we always have the optimism that things are going to turn out well, but then somehow it sneaks back in the people whom we love the most and we think should love us the most so often hurt us the most. There is strife and discord, disagreement, and perhaps even great betrayals that happen in these places where love should belong. So we have this reality of relationships between us. Oh, it's an election year. God help the United States of America. We live in a good country here, but a very broken country. You cannot call the strife that we see in the public discourse that in, is between the different agents of state and of political parties, you cannot call this healthy and good. We are in a sick country, and this is going to be, God, God forbid it, but is going to be a year of sickness. And then what about me? What about you? We can so often say what St. Paul has to say. Why do I do the things that I do not want to do? Sin is a part of our life. It's a spiritual reality. For all the gifts of intellect and will that we have, we misuse them. We learn through God, divine revelation, the scriptures, the church, what is his holy will, how we're to follow him with faith, what the moral life should look like. And we know that we don't keep it, that we make shortcuts, that we turn the other way. And when we have that moment of truth as we stand before the Lord, we know that we're not always what either God or we would want. And that a force of death has even overtaken us. Death is real. Spiritual deaths, emotional deaths, relational deaths, physical death. They're all real, and they're very much a part of this human scene. And we would be ignorant and naive if we tried to pretend these forces weren't there. Some people do try to pretend the force of death is not there, and that somehow they're impervious and they'll outrun it. Some people do this with a cult of working out. If I can just have the body in the perfect shape, somehow cheat cancer, cheat heart problems, somehow I'll cheat death. But you won't. Some people think that if I've just got the right psychological program or self-help toolkit, I'll be just fine. But you won't be. Some people think that they can just stoically master their way through life and be some epitome of virtue by their own devices. And then the divine, the universe, whatever that means, will be okay with them. But that also 
is not true. Oh, some people drug away their problems. Some people sleep away their problems. Some people drink away their problems. Some people shop away their problems. There's a lot of avoidance techniques to not be honest with the reality of death. But we here will be honest. So what will we do with it? What will we do with the reality and the force of death in our lives, among our family members, friends, our society, the world? We'll let Christ deal with it. And this is where he comes in. He who was born but to die. You and I don't come to this world with any sort of mission like that, but he did. He was sent by the fa Father out of perfect obedience to accept and to embrace our humanity, to pass by way of the cross, to open the door to life. There is no Easter Sunday without a Good Friday. And on Good Friday, Jesus said, give me everything that keeps you from the Father. Give me your sufferings, your doubts. Give me your denials. Give me your sins. Give me the very reality of death, of hell, and all the powers of the devil. Lay them upon me. And so he died. He died our death. He who is God and should not die. The innocent one, he embraced it freely, suffered it for us. He went to the tomb for us. He went into the darkness of death for us while still trusting in the power, the goodness, and the love of his Father. I said that the Christian life is a sentence with three words, life, death, and resurrection. So our Lord has come to live among us. Jesus suffered and died for us. And today we celebrate the fact that God, the Father, did respond. That by the power of the Holy Spirit, by his own divine power, Jesus Christ walked out of that tomb this morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. He can no longer suffer again. He can no longer know death again. He has risen triumphant to a new sort of life. Yes, he is in the flesh, but alive fully also in the spirit. A new sort of glorious risen life. And he has told us, has offered us, promised us, that the sort of life that he now enjoys can be ours too. Where are you on the journey of life, death, and resurrection. Yes, if you're listening to me now, seeing the screen now, you're alive. Are you? What is the force of death in your life? Where do you die? Will you let Christ bring you to life, even there? Will you let Jesus Christ walk out of the tombs of your life to lead you in the way of life, today and tomorrow and on to eternity? The Holy Spirit wants to come upon us to bring the full power of the resurrection to bear in us, first by mystery, so that it can lead us to eternity. This is done by faith and by sacrament. We have to, yes, assent to God and his ways, profess our belief in the Trinity, in the goodness of Jesus Christ, who lives and dies and rises again and is our life and our all. And then we have to receive that life by grace into our very bodies, into our souls, by the sacramental economy of the church. Baptism, confirmation, the Holy Eucharist, which we celebrate now, the forgiveness of sins and the reconciliation of confession. In all of the sacraments of the church, Christ is present there, living, dying, rising mysteriously, but truly for us. If it's been a long time since you've received the sacraments, or if it's never been the time since you've received the sacraments, this is your invitation. Jesus is pouring out grace. The Lord invites. He wants you. He wants you alive. 
Our life is a sentence of three words. Life, death, and resurrection. And this is the day that gives meaning to it all. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Truly, he is risen. Alleluia. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Bathed in the bright light of Christ rising from the dead, the hope of our resurrection in him, we offer all our prayers before the throne of mercy and grace. Let us pray for God's holy church, that the Pope, all bishops and priests, would be aided by the Holy Spirit to proclaim boldly the power of the resurrection, and that all the world would come to faith in the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world and our community, that individuals and whole societies would experience in their personal and common lives more fully the power of God's redemptive love over the forces of hell, death, and sin. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who join us with this Mass, that our sacramental participation in the victory of the risen Lord would also be evidenced in our daily lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in need of God's mercy, that the Easter festival would be an occasion for experiencing and sharing Jesus' risen life the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the holy souls, that our beloved dead and benefactors would be purified in God's love and brought rejoicing into the paschal feast of the heavenly Jerusalem, we pray to the Lord. Almighty God, celebrating the joy of Easter Day, we beg you to grant these prayers through Christ our Lord. Here, all ye nations, hear it, all ye dead. 
prisoners of death. He burst the bars of death. He burst the bars of death and triumphed for the grave. Then, then, then I rose. Then I rose. Then I rose. Then I rose. Then burst humanity triumphant past the crystal ports of life and seized eternal youth and seized. Boundless place finds all the glory and the boundless Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, and Jorge, his assistant, and all those who holding to the truth hand, and, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, for they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, 
Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, where your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Through us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. With the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who worship the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia.
Pre-recorded TV Mass is made possible by the Archdiocese of Denver and the Catholic Foundation. Hi, I'm Father Matthew McGee, a priest here in the Archdiocese of Denver. And each week, people from across Colorado, around the country and the world, tune into TV Mass here each Sunday. On the air since 1966, TV Mass continues to bring the Word of God to those who cannot attend. For more information and ways to support TV Mass, please visit thecatholicfoundation.com.